Welcome back to AM Northwest. Our, our first guest says there's a lot of interesting body language going on in athletics. Here to show us what to look for the next time we're watching our favorite sport, we're happy to welcome back the author of Human Lie Detection and Body Language 101, Vanessa Van Edwards. Good to see Hi. you. Hi. All right, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, let's, what we're going to do, we're going to look at some pictures of athletes in action, just cool. different moments during the yes. game. Doesn't matter what the sport is, but you're saying there's they're telling us a lot just by the way they're carrying themselves. Yeah, there's a, sort of a hidden language to sport. And when you think about it, it makes sense because you can't say to a, another player, I'm going to pass the ball to you. Right. You know, you, you can't say that. So actually, athletes are very good at reading body language because they intuitively pick up on the nonverbal cues that someone's sending them and of the other players. So there's a whole different language going on. Hopefully you can catch it. Fascinating. Right. Right. Let's take a look at a picture and then you tell us. So this is the universal body language of pride or winning. There was a fascinating study done by the University of British Columbia, and they looked at seeing athletes and blind athletes. And they realized that they made the same body language when they won a race. And that was interesting because blind athletes, they were congenitally blind, so they'd never seen anyone win a race. Oh, wow. But they still made the same body language. So we've learned that that's actually our innate response. When we feel pride, even a kid, if they win a race or they make a cookie or whatever, they'll go, yeah. And that's because sense. it is that universal body language of pride. And do losers then hang their head in shame? Right. So the universal body language of defeat is the opposite. They roll their shoulders in, almost like a deflating balloon. Mm -hmm. They roll their shoulders in, hang their head and their arms loose, and usually they'll make a pained expression on their face or clench their fists. It's literally like a balloon deflating, losing all their air. You mentioned that athletes will give nonverbal cues to one another. So let's talk about some of those, like the, you know, with, with the, you said they can do it with the eyebrows, right? Yes. So um, a quick eyebrow flash is actually the universal invitation cue. It's literally like, get ready or pay attention. Do, the, do that again. So. You see, whenever I, yeah. see Very that, quick. I, whenever I see that, I know I'm buying somebody a drink. Yes. That's what I know. Yes, because <laughs> women do this in bars yeah. as well. Yeah. So when a woman flashes her eyebrows at you, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. you know you're in, right? Yeah. You yeah. know you, you, Most guys will. <laughs> I, I, suspect, I suspect I'm about to get It's robbed. a good thing. Yeah. But. So, so athletes will do this as a way of saying, get ready. Something's going to happen. I'm going to oh, pass you yeah. the ball. Right. Uh, we're going to try to score. We're going to get together. So you'll, if you watch um, a game on mute, you just look for facial expressions. You'll see they'll flash their eyebrows. They can also change jut as a way of pointing. This is a more subtle way than I'm going to pass the ball right. over there. Just a, um, look so over there. Just, yeah. So just you'll see that they'll they'll gesture with their chin. There's a ton of gesturing going on. If you watch players of all sports, they'll gesture with their chin. They can also do it with their torso. You'll notice if you slow down a clip in a microsecond before someone passes, they'll angle their torso towards the person they're passing. Now, of course, this makes it easier, but it's also a way to cue the other person, get ready. Yeah, they, and that's I'm how you usually know. And, and would, they, would they maybe do it and then go back to a different position and then, and then? Yeah, usually it's a quick pivot, and you'll notice in every sport, lacrosse, basketball, hockey, they'll slightly turn their torso as a nonverbal cue of say, get ready, it's coming. I'm surprised you're not on the sidelines of the Blazers right I, now. I, I, I'm <laughs> shocked. Uh, all right, let's talk about the body language of camaraderie. Right, so as a team player, the boundaries between people are a lot smaller. So usually we're six to 12 inches away from people. But teammates, they're constantly bumping up against each other. Right. So you'll notice that they're close in proximity. They'll stand very close together. You'll notice that co you know, team members, they'll talk really close right. to each other because they have less distance and they also do a lot of touching. So butt that's, pats, yeah, I was gonna back say the pats. Butt pats yeah. yeah, that's actually called haptics. It's the power of touch and we do it to bond. It releases a chemical that bonds us. So the more that we touch people, the more we feel bonded to them, which is exactly what you need when you're on a team. Interesting. So that there's, there, there, so. so yeah, if you, were to, if you were to hold your hand on Helen's back, you would actually begin to release oxygen oxytocin and that would make you feel bonded to Helen so all that touching and patting and bumping it actually is a way that team See, players that's bond what I, thought. I thought it was team building but when I patted her on the butt I had to go to HR <laughs> yeah. so that's get that seminar that's yeah. Yeah. Right. Another, uh, boy another eight hours of this uh, we, we talk about losing but uh, shame is another one too. so well, we think they would kind of be similar to losing yeah so I it's always interesting when a player misses a goal or makes a mistake you'll notice that he'll bring he or she will bring the fingers to the tops of their forehead and cover their face. This is the universal gesture of shame. And we do it because we subconsciously want to literally block out what we're seeing or what we're ashamed of. So you'll notice if somebody, an athlete did something, they'll go, oh. 
and they'll hold their hand to their head or they'll cover their face, almost like they're shielding themselves from the, the no, hurdles no, like of the we audience. Do, uh, lock the keys in the car. Yeah. And we do the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. Or like, you know, if you watch a celebrity or a, a Funniest Home Videos, people will go, oh my gosh. Yeah. That's the universal gesture of embarrassment or shame. Um, you may, uh, let's see, the body language of an alpha. Yes. So. I always like to watch a team that I don't know and try to guess who the most powerful player is. And you can tell because they puff out their chest and they hold themselves high. So you can always tell the alpha of a team who's the biggest who holds their chest out high. That's how you know usually who the best player is. Uh, it's interesting. So, so you really, when we're watching the game, yeah. so it's a, a Blazer game, for example, you've got to really pay attention to... Yeah, you can actually, it adds a whole other dimension when you're watching sports. So if you're watching a Blazers game, you can actually try to predict where the ball is going to go, who the alpha on the team is, who the unspoken leader is, just by the body language that's happening. You can also watch for mistakes, for that rolled-in shoulder if they miss a shot, if they use that shame body language. You can also watch the sidelines to see what the athletes are doing. You'll see they'll actually start to move with the player because they their body is reacting to the person they're watching. Could there sometimes be a false alpha, like somebody who really thinks that he's the <laughs> number one guy but is not? Yes, you often have a, especially when there's new players on the team or the beginning of a season, you'll have men who are sort of battling it out and you'll see they'll both puff their chests out toward each other and typically they point their toes towards that person because they're like trying to go head on to claim that territory of the number one on the team. Um, what about for individuals now, playing on a team? Yes. Obviously, learning nonverbal cues, and some of it seems intrinsic, it just happens. Yeah. Yes. But uh, if you're playing, I'm thinking of golf as an example, because it's yeah. the only thing I play. Uh, <laughs> no one else ever picks me. Um, <laughs> but, but can you read your own body language to measure how well you might be doing. In other words, if you find yourself carrying yourself a certain way or doing a certain thing, you could be telling yourself not to be successful. Yes, actually you can puff yourself up or pump yourself up to get that testosterone pumping. So people who actually have that broad chest hold their shoulders back and their head high, they release more testosterone than people who hold themselves like this. So you yourself as a golfer could walk onto the course like this and that testosterone gets going no. and that's going to make you play like better. Like a day, by the end of 18, I'm doing this. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. Always fascinating when you're here. Thank you so much.